Hi guys, welcome to today's episode on the Ashling and Richie podcast. I'm Ashling Fitzgibbon, holistic nutrition coach. And I'm Richie Ross, Irish singer-songwriter. So Richie was missing in action last year as he was away on tour in Europe, which he's going to tell us about now. And I've been doing the podcast on the Moving From Fear To Trust series. So now that Richie is back, we're going to be doing the podcast episode with each other every second week and then I have the interview then the other week. So Richie, welcome back to the podcast. It's been a while. Thank you very much. Now we have been out of action doing our podcasting for, I can't remember when was the last one we did, but it's been a long time. So um, let everybody know who's, what were you up to and what was your tour all about? Well, I went on tour last April and I was on tour for nine months promoting the release of my debut album all over Europe and that's basically it and now I'm back. So you were in Europe, getting, getting tell, tell us the countries that you were in because you were actually driving all over the place. I was in Belgium, France, Denmark, Sweden, Holland, Poland, Czech Republic, Germany, um, that's just a few and uh, yeah I, I travelled all over Europe so. Yeah, and then you came back, and you came back to a house full of puppies. A house full of puppies? Yeah. And we kept one, and his name is Happy. Happy is Richie's puppy, and he's absolutely adorable. Yeah. And then you actually went off to Poland, and then the whole coronavirus thing blew up. Yes. You, you almost got stuck there. So I was in Poland, and I was uh, beginning a tour there for a week. Mm. And I was there, like, uh, I arrived on a, Wednesday, on a Tuesday, and by the Thursday... Uh, I played uh, two shows and then the con the whole tour was cancelled and I decided just to be safe to travel from the south of uh, Poland back to where I flew into and just wait there but on the way back on the train they rang me the, the promoter or the booking agency and they asked me to check my flights and for with Ryanair and to see if they were cancelled but the flights were okay but they said don't don't take a chance because it's a uh, it's looking like that the whole uh, country is going to close down and all flights will be cancelled. So mm -hmm. I had to get out of there really fast. And I got a flight from uh, Poland to Stansted because there was no flight from Poland to Ireland until the Sunday. And it was the Friday. So if I'd waited, uh, mm -hmm. to, I would have missed it. I, I'd still be stuck over there. You were still there? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It would have been an absolute disaster if you were so stuck there. So I was quite lucky, but it was a very expensive um, mistake. It wasn't a mistake. Like you can't really blame anyone. It's just well, it was a mistake because I really shouldn't have gone. Because I knew, I knew when I was leaving, I was like, all right, I think this is something's happening here. This is going to be bad. And uh, you know, when you say it to yourself, trust your gut. That was one of the occasions where I should have rang up the booking agency and said, you know what? Rather than me spending six hundred euros on a tour where I'm going to lose so much money, that um, forget about it. And it would have been the right decision. So. Well, maybe that's something to bring forward into the future. But when you get those feelings that you actually act on the gut feeling and not just what your head thinks. Oh, I'll just do it because I've already booked it and I've said yeah. So that's true. follow your gut instinct. It's always communicating. Actually, your body, I think, has much more wisdom than just what your head says because your head is, is so busy and programmed to not be tuned into actually what you feel. Just so... How is the coronavirus affecting you right now, Richie? Well, um, I'm, I'm actually quite lucky because because I did the tour last year and I was on the road for nine months, I decided that this year I was going to spend it uh, much more time back in Ireland and get ready for my next tour next year mm -hmm. and plan uh, my next album release, um, which is going to be for my next tour next year. So it's basically taking a year off just to get organized for next year and um then, then the, i was, the, I was the, gonna gig gig yeah. more in ireland yeah you were gonna start gigging here so obviously that's affected me because i can't gig in ireland but um hopefully maybe in the summer once things get back up and running i can organize more gigs mm. in ireland it's hard to tell when this is all gonna lift isn't it because we don't know yet yeah but it's gonna lift yeah you know but well, you're using this time because I hear you in your office, your studio. He's playing a lot of music. So tell us what you're up to with your creations in the studio. Well, my next album is going to be all Irish um, 
Irish songs and some original songs, but it's mainly going to be uh, uh, just the guitar and vocals. Mm. So, keeping it simple. Keeping it very simple. Yeah, because your first album was very mastered and very produced. It was. It, it was very. Uh, oh, it was all overproduced for the live shows that I'm actually currently performing, which are, are solo. So, you're you you you're playing your solo show and then you have an album that's got an orchestra and French horns and trumpets and <laughs> drums and bass and it's just you standing there with the guitar so obviously when someone buys the CD and they get home and they play it they're kind of going oh mm. that's totally different to the live show so my idea behind the next album is to uh, basically have the live show on the CD as you'd hear it get as close to it as possible so as authentic as possible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what people are li looking for, aren't they, when you are on, on tour? Like, that's yeah. what they're kind of asking for. Yeah, and it's... Because uh, I, I play a lot of Irish songs when I'm on tour. Hmm. And people have said, oh, is that song on on, a, on your CD? And I'm, I'm like, no, that's I haven't recorded it. So then I was thinking, right, just record all of my favourite Irish songs that I sing when I'm on tour. But not only that, to try and push the envelope and um, really make the uh, arrange fingerstyle arrangements uh, really interesting mm -hmm. and uh, so that's what I'm re I'm working hard on and it's quite challenging and uh, takes a lot of work and a lot of practice but yeah. we're going to get there but there's no there's no boredom in our house because between you you practicing and writing music and then myself I'm creating all the content for energy is your currency membership and Richie is my film man and uh, lighting expert and all and the sound you're all those people yeah. um so very lucky to have you with you i'm very lucky to have you home this year to be able to do that because i know next year we're both going to be heading out on the road imagine that it's gonna be fun the big wide open spaces yeah um and something that i wanted to touch upon is just how important it is to be able to support each other's visions and that's something that isn't as common do you know as in like for two people to get together and actually really be right like, really be supportive of each other's visions yeah but it's something we w we're working on all the time as in it's it's just, it, doesn't, it doesn't come easy it doesn't just like all right you, you kind of it's all right how 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 am i here to help the other person or mm -hmm. what would they like or is this going to help them yeah and i think it's not to be oh you, you you need to be doing this you need to have a nine to five you need to do xyz mm. Because my friend's uh, fiance or my friend's husband is doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it, when you're in a relationship with, with uh, creatives, <laughs> you have to be very mindful of what it's like to be a creative, and it is and, and the mind of a creative. Yeah, and it's uh, and also that like you haven't come here to just go through the motions. You've come here. For it's like something specific, like you you're here to create something, and you won't rest until you actually initiate that process of creation. Hmm. Would you Would you agree? Absolutely. I think that's actually what initially attracted us to each other because you were talking, and I was like, "Hmm, this fella's talking my language. He sounds f like fully intense, as mad as a hatter as I am, as in yeah. in a good way. Like you were talking about, like you know, I visualize this in my mind's eye and." You know, I went and I went back to college and I trained as a physio and now I'm releasing my album and I'm doing what I want to do. And I was kind of like, I also want to do that as well. But it's like in the early years, you need a lot of support. You need to have somebody in your corner, even if that's just one person to say, mm -hmm. you know, keep going and keep strengthening yourself. Because it is, it's not like anything comes around overnight. It's a, it's a long game process. And what I love about our relationship is just how we remind each other all the time of the long game and to be like okay what do you need to do in the short term right now in order to like bring this to the next level and what do you actually need to focus on as opposed to watching all the people out there they're doing this they're doing that i should mm. be further ahead am i am i doing it right it's like we're actually both really grounding for each other not just for our visions but also like for taking care of each other and mm. you know having a lovely time together as well i think like we're really good for like working out together going for walks, making meals. 
filming the meals. Filming the meals, Richie is my film man and, and then, sound engineer. Then eating the meals. And then we eat the meals after we did the filming. Um, and you just give me the heart and the courage within my own self. Like you, you encourage. I, I also start. I also stop her from waffling. Oh my gosh, I am a chief waffler, aren't I? So just just by my presence being in the room, Ashley's on her guard. She's I'm like, like oh, I'm waffling here. I, I better not waffle. Yeah, Richie has really trained me to not be just like show up on the camera and be like blah 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 blah. That like you know there ha there is there is value in having a structure and knowing what you're saying and having a script and being prepared. And but not not, yeah. not even that. Just it's just to uh, get to the point with what you're saying. Yeah. There's like there's so much stuff you can just cut out. You just say it and then move on and then mm -hmm. you know get it done. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. This is a nice one. I have an idea. We'll see if you go with it. Yeah. What do you most like about our relationship? Um. That it's unconventional. Yeah. And it's a. Uh, I, I look at it, I, if Ashley said, oh, I've got this idea, I want to do this with what I'm doing with my business or just in general, mm. what would you think of it? I'd probably go, yeah, let's see how we can fit it into our relationship or what we're doing in life. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'd look at it as in, that's a really positive thing to be able to throw ideas at each other and then be able to have someone go, yeah, well, let's see if we can actually work that into what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if we can make it work, we, we let's make it work. Yeah. I love that. So I what I love about our relationship is um, just how supportive we are at encouraging each other to become our greater self. And we've, we've done that from the very beginning, you know, like pushing each other. I remember when I met you, his, Richie Ross's Facebook page was like, and on your Facebook page, you need to be sharing what you do with the world and like everything. You did the same for me. You were like, Ashley, you need to put yourself out there and do all the things. Uh, and it's daunting at the start, like anyone stepping into their visibility, it's really, really daunting. Because oh, well, when, we, when Ashley first started her, her online health school, we sat down. And for hours and hours and hours, we went through on how to build her website. Oh my gosh, Squarespace. she space. kicked, yeah. she screamed, and she cried. And we did it on her mum's ancient la computer. laptop that was so full of crap that it took, it, it was impossible. You couldn't, so then... It was gems, I, I it was was like, gems with all the stuff from the listen, campaign. I said, you do, you, there's no way in uh, hope in hell going forward mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to create anything using this computer. So mm -hmm. I said... You're gonna to have to spend money on a, a proper laptop. So she got a, a nice new Mac. Had, we got the website up and running, and it, it was just a basic website. And now, mm -hmm. what three or four years down the line? Four years, yeah. It's like got a membership on it, got people on it. You know, it's it's. And I'm and I'm doing things now in my business that like I only dreamt, like yeah. were kind of a pipe dream like four years ago. Yeah. Um, and you've always shown me like that. You can't wait for the result. You have to like step into it. And act from that place already you know like i was like oh i can't invest in a new computer oh i can't invest in this i can't do this i can't go there i would be kind of like cautious whereas you'd be kind of like to me for you to actually get to where the level that you actually want to get to you're going to have to actually make those risks and actually invest and take those chances mm. because you have to you have to step into it before it actually materializes it's not about like waiting for uh, but it it's, to fall on on your plate which it's, it doesn't. it's the it's the the illusion of safety because we were talking about this yesterday. It's about um, you know you're like oh, but I need to hold on to that money for X Y Z rather than saying right, I need to spend this money to then improve my business, build my business, mm -hmm. move forward, and then you know it's like people people would they like to make excuses of of oh. I'll take the safe option. Yeah. I'll take this nine to five job because this is the safe option. And, you know, then something like the coronavirus comes along and everyone's in the same boat. You know, mm -hmm. everyone ends up. It, so it doesn't matter if you're a singer or if you're what you're doing. You know, it's like people are out of work and they end up at home. Mm -hmm. Well, some people are working from home. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's actually benefited you because your, your, your work has increased. Yeah. 
But um, what I was finding out this week, delving into the pastor and Beauchamp, and you found that really fascinating in terms of like where this whole idea of like the germ theory and why everyone is so terrified and wearing masks and where this whole idea came from, you know, of what actually creates disease. You found that really interesting, didn't you? When I when I was sharing yeah. that with you. Yeah, it was. Uh... What did you think of it before you heard that? Well, I, I always, I knew, I knew about the Beauchamp, is it? Yeah. I know, I knew about Pasteur. Yeah, Louis Pasteur, yeah. Yeah, because he's the, he's the modern, uh, he's the founder of the modern uh, medical, yeah. modern day medicalist, uh, the philosophy behind it. Yeah. And that's like, basically the pharmaceuticals, all the drugs and the external, uh, you, you externally contract something, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. But he, 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 Ashley was planning, she's planning to do a master class with a nutritionist that she, her mum trained with and Ashley trained with years ago for her online health school. And um, she was just going through stuff and I was like, coming, I came across a, a, a webinar she did on the, the two different views and mm -hmm. the, how how the two different models came about. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just found it fascinating because when when you when you really look into it then you you understand why uh, uh, you understand why a lot of the way people act not even so not even not even just the medical system but everything mm -hmm. like e even even when it comes to the church mm -hmm. and stuff you know you uh you understand why you know, pe people rather than looking within themselves, they they want to look at an external force like uh, God or something else that will bring bring them through. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's almost like that view that like God is outside of you, and it's like you're not connected to that. Yeah. Isn't it? The power is outside of you. The power is outside of you. Yeah. That's uh, that's because when, when I was watching this, when I was looking at the webinar, I was like, that's got a, just got a wider meaning to everything. Yeah, it does. Not just health. Yeah. But what happened was, then you had these two, these two theories, and then you see how it's, one went one way, and then the other, mm -hmm. and then one got completely sidetracked, yeah, and co got completely probably covered up and and hidden. For, hidden and forgotten about because obviously you have the medical system, which is the pro predominant uh, mainstream way of thinking, and and mm -hmm. you know it's uh, one pill. F fixes everything isn't every it? ill kind of, yeah so it's uh, the whole thing with pasteur is like this idea that yeah as you said like disease comes from outside of you it's this germ theory that there is an outside invader pathogen virus bacteria that can get into coronavirus your, coronavirus that can get into your system and you really don't have any say in the matter do you know as in like it happens you contract it you contract it nothing you can do about it there's no there's no um, responsibility given to you I know obviously people are now big into like hand hygiene and wearing masks and things like that, but it's not about like how your actual body has its own immunity. There's no mention of that or how to actually work on that. And then Beauchamp's theory is like a completely different view where it actually looks at the conditions of the body and how that actually creates the outcome for health. So in terms of like things like- Like, gen like genetic uh, predispositions. Predispositions, pre -dis yeah. Well, it's that, it's, it's within- that's a tough word. Yeah, it's pre, pre predispositions. Pre predispositions. Um, no, but it's actually the conditions of the body in terms of um, like your pH and your hydration and your mineral levels and all these different things that like basically really determine the outcome of your health, whether you're going to contract an illness or whether you're going to have a chronic condition. So the whole theory of Beauchamp, which is really like putting the power within your own self, yeah. It's putting it back into your own hands. It's giving full responsibility to you as an individual. And Richie mentioned predisposition. So yes, like in our family lines, we definitely inherit certain predispositions for maybe conditions, such, you know, like heart disease or, you know, different chronic conditions. But basically you have the ability to switch on disease causing genes by your lifestyle choices, by the environment. But you can also change the environment and you can switch them off and turn on regeneration of your systems and your organs. So again, it's not like you're just at the mercy of your genes or at the mercy of all these outside invaders. It's really about being able to empower your own self that you can you can create 
new habits and new um, ways of eating and new ways of nourishing and taking care of your being that actually create the conditions for health. So in an alkaline environment, viruses, bacteria, these things can't thrive and they can't take over. So it really is about being able to alkalize your system. And what's interesting about like the whole like media and fear and everything, that actually creates like acidic environments in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So the more acidic you are, the more fearful you are, the more you're actually going to be more likely to get sick and the more likely you are to develop conditions and mm. respiratory conditions or whatever from certain viruses. So on the other hand, if you cultivate like your own power, your own connection, and that actually God is within your own self, that your connection to your own power is within your own self. You are God. That creates a level of trust in your body and in your life. And that creates an alkaline environment as well. So it's not just about what you're eating. It's actually about all the different ways, how you're thinking, how you're hydrating, how you're eating, how you're nourishing, how you're exercising. All of these things make a massive difference to how your biology will express itself. Um, and being able to create those conditions really is about also being able to come back to your own self. It's like what we're talking about, like being able to create your own, your own path and co-creation of your life. And when you come home for yourself as well, you're stronger as well physically. Like all these things are interconnected. Like if you're living a life that's not true to you and you're living the life that maybe your family said that you have to live to be successful or to be accepted, you're always going to be in this conflict with yourself. So I think, again, it's not just one view or it's, it's really about looking at you holistically and it's about getting all the parts of you aligned with the highest choice. And that highest choice ultimately comes down to are you actually being true to yourself? Are you actually in your own power? And are you now taking this opportunity right now, this massive initiation to come back to your own power? You know, that that's what it actually is. If you look at it, mm. like I know there's all these theories and there's so many different agendas at play, but ultimately it's an it's an opportunity for you to either hand over your power completely. Yeah, because you, you, you have come no, back. you have no control. Uh, that's that's the thing. The, the current situation is you have no control over it. Yeah. But you have control over your own body, you know. Mm. So you have your own your, your you have control over what you eat, you have control if you exercise, you have control if you take supplements. But if you're as you said, if you're watching the news and if you're watching mainstream media and you're taking in everything that's happening with this current uh situation, then you're you're taking in fear. Mm -hmm. As you said, if that makes you more alkaline, more more acidic, the fear. More, <clears throat> sorry, more acidic. Well, then it's, you know, you, your your immune system is going to be weakened. Of course, yeah, you're going you're going to be in as, a way more vulnerable position then. And as they say, it's like the coronavirus is taking people mm -hmm. with weaker immune systems. Yeah. You know, and it's like it's like. The was it Beauchamp was saying, you need to. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen your, own your immune system. yeah. Strengthen your own inner, your own. His, his is called the terrain theory. So it's like about the inner soil, the inner terrain, mm. the inner environment, and how you strengthen that, and that actually creates the conditions that don't allow those things to get in and actually um, take over your system. We always have viruses and bacteria and all these things in us, but it's when they actually take over yeah. that it becomes a problem. Um, and so the whole thing is like it's not about trying to kill the virus. It's actually about strengthening your your own self. On all levels, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and actually going to going up to this point in my life, have I been living true to myself? What is what is it that I now want to let go of that's no longer serving me? Because this is really bringing us into such high levels of fear and uncertainty that it's like this is a great time to actually clear away a lot of the stuff that's been holding you holding you down and holding you back. Hmm. And that's something that I've really felt my own self that it's just like oh my god, the amount of stupid things that you'd be entertaining. That this is just like, just clear that off because it, it, it doesn't have a place here. And where you want to go is very much determined by how you are in this current situation. Because like where you want to go in, in your life, you know, it's uh, if you have a long term vision for what you want to do. Then you stay focused on mm -hmm. what it is you're doing from day to day to then eventually, you know, get you to where it is you want to go to. Yeah. So you're not like focused on, oh, the coronavirus is here. We can't, we, our lives are completely changed. We can never be the same again. Our, mm -hmm. our future ambitions are, are never, never going to 
become anything because of the current situation. But again, that's like you're letting an outside force yeah. take you away from your own inner self, your own inner focus. And uh, that's why I, I think when I when I when I watched that webinar with um, Barbara Wren, I found it fascinating how you can relate this topic, which is to do with the with the health system or the medical model. Mm -hmm. You can relate it to so many areas and so many aspects of your life. Yeah, not just the medical system or um, yeah. So I've done a, I've done a uh, whole blog article, so I'll yeah, I'll, I'll the link for put that link into it, and that goes into the whole like background of what that is about Pasteur versus Beauchamp. Yeah. So if you want to do further reading, that'll be included below. Um, I've just kind of simplified down what it was from Barbara's teachings, who I trained with in nutrition and is a real game changer in terms of just that whole outlook because, yeah, as you said, the medical model would have you believe your power is outside of yourself and you're always outsourcing your power and everything to that, to that place, to that model. Yeah. Whether that's an individual doctor or the system itself, and, or what, what you know, it, when you when you read about this, try and try and look at it from every kind of a model. Yeah, you know, it's it's actually a model. It's two different models. It's a, it's a way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah. But it's just something that they've now they've they've uh, it's they've related it to the health system. But yeah, but it's in every it's in every system: education, yeah. finance, relationships, education, everything, everything. You can you can look yeah. at it that kind of a way. You know, and I thought that's. Yeah. What I found very interesting about it because just like one simple topic. Yeah. And you're like, wow, that's so, so powerful. Re relatable to so many aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. but, but Richie, a huge point is that like it takes a huge amount of personal power and responsibility to actually go on that path of returning back to their own selves. You know, like not everybody actually wants to do that because it's not easy. You know, as in, like, it takes a lot of work to take care of your nutrition, to exercise, but that's why, to that's do all why, these things, you that's, know? That's the reason I thought I found it very interesting is when you when you read up about that and you see the two different, you read up about how they, they came about, the two different models, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you, you start to go, whoa, there's so much more to this. Yeah. Do you know, it's not it's not just black and white. This no. is the way it is. Yeah. So I think it's the more the more you become open to it, mm -hmm. then it's the more you. Yeah, and the thing is, want to change. yeah, and that's the thing with um, how I transitioned out of like fighting the system with activism with the Girl Against Flora to then putting all my energy into creating my work with my online health school in Energy Is Your Currency, and creating a space where for people who are ready to go on this journey that I can help and guide them to actually come back to their own selves and unravel their programming that they've had that their power is outside themselves hmm. do you know because i realized that there was no point me fighting against fluoride for many years and you know on, on, on and on that it was like don't give your energy to the old system it's like that that quote it's like give your energy to the new system and you make the old system obsolete like, teach people to empower themselves teach people to take responsibility to then go out and educate others to teach their children look this is the way it is rather than shouting from rooftops ah, well, you can't because you can't why aren't you doing this why why doesn't everyone see this why you can't it? you can't force change upon anyone and people have to be ready and and it's not to like shame people or say oh you're not you're doing this and therefore you're yeah. you're bad you know it's nothing to do with being good or bad or anything it's just like it's where we've been in our growth and our evolution and i think we're at, at a point where there's a lot of people that are ready to make this leap and to to come back to their own selves and go into the unknown and actually do something that the mainstream isn't validating that they actually have to find their own discovery with they have to make up their own minds they have to be critical thinkers they have to run it through their own instinct and kind of go they have to what? research they have to research yeah put it together yeah so any final words for today's podcast because we have had a great time go and research um pastors and yeah so i'm going to include the link below as a starting point Beauchamp. And just, yeah, have a read of that about Pasteur and Beauchamp and let us yeah. know what your thoughts are uh, and whether that's something that you are maybe in the germ theory camp or the terrain theory camp and maybe you're changing your mind about things because of that understanding that it kind of gives you this new, new framework to look at health and what actually creates health and how we can strengthen ourselves yeah. to be strong in our immunity 
and our physical resilience. But also when, when you're reading it, when you're reading the, the blog or when you're researching it, related to your relationships, yeah, related to other areas of your life, like your work, you know, and um, I think you'll find it very interesting. Yeah, so. absolutely. So we'll see you here next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye bye.